Hi, this is Matt with CustomCarGrills.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a gut and cut grill installation for a Mini Countryman. First, I want to remove some of these vertical bars that's holding in the center of the grill. I'm using just a simple open-ended hacksaw blade to get through this. Next, I'm going to use a Dremel with the drywall cutting attachment and slowly work my way around the perimeter of the grill. Once this is complete and I've gone all the way around, the entire center part of the grill should fall just right out. Other rotary tools and attachments will work for cutting through this material, so use what you feel comfortable with. Now that the inner piece is cut out and we have the grill shell to work with, I'm going to do some fine detail work here. In an effort to get the grill installed in a way I would like it to be installed, I need to account for the thickness of the factory grill as well as the thickness of the metal that I'm going to be using. A little bit of trial and error is expected in a project like this. As you can see here, I still have a little bit of cutting to do. As with this case, if you can remove unnecessary tabs, this will be the time to do it. Without the tabs, you'll be able to get the grill mesh flushly laid up against the back part of the grill. In this case, I'm just simply using some cable ties as well as some foam to protect the outside of the grill shell. As I flip the grill shell over, you'll see that the mesh is laying very nice and flat. Using a black marker, I'm drawing an outline slightly oversized to the grill opening. For this project, it's going to give us a little excess grill material, but it's better to have too much grill mesh than not enough. Using just a basic pair of tin snips, I'm able to cut through this material relatively easy. For this project, I'm using what we call the Perf GT aluminum grill mesh sheet, and I'm using a 16 inch tall by 48 inch wide sheet for just the main opening. Here's what the piece looks like fully cut out. You'll notice that I did put some 90 degree bends on some excess material at the top. This will help us with the installation later on. Meanwhile, I changed the chrome trim piece to a black finish using a black plasti dip. As you can see, we have good coverage all the way around. And now as I flip it around, you'll see that those tabs that I had made with an 90 degree bend will come in handy when we do the final installation. Whereas we also do still have some excess that will need to be cut down. For this installation, I've temporarily held the mesh in place with cable ties, and I'm using automotive goop to draw a perimeter of adhesive around the grill mesh so that it bonds with the plastic trim. Once it dries, you can remove the cable ties, and you'll have a nice clean finish on the front. You may want to use some foam padding under the cable ties to protect the finish of the grill like I did here. We're almost done, but here's a preview of our work thus far. I'm happy with the results of how it looks from the front, but we're still going to have some clearance issues getting the grill back on the vehicle. The last step will be to cut away some of the excess material that falls a little too far below the opening. Once that's removed, here's what the finished product looks like with the grill reinstalled on the vehicle. It's quite a change from the factory grill, and I hope you like what you saw. If you have any questions about this or any other installations, feel free to email me.